did this a whole lot earlier, but I'm scouting for deer. This is a uh, public land. Should have been doing it in April or whatever, but been busy. So anyway, I'm walking through this. Uh, it's right beside a large marsh, and um, there's like a like a clear cut between the woods, the marsh, and and in between is like a an old clear cut. So it's all kinds of popple trees. So it's super thick back here. Obviously, as you can see, walking through here's tons of raspberries. So my wife will have to come in here. Um, you could pick to your heart's content. But uh, anyway, I should have brought a gun because there's bears back here. Um, and I can see that this log has been rolled. Look at that. So anyway, should have brought something because it's an impenetrable wall of green. So I could easily sneak up on a bear and cubs. So I've been, you know, talking and stuff. But anyway, um, you can see you, to shoot big bucks, you got to come in to the thick stuff. Um, and I've learned that more and more as I get older. But there's there's an old rub there. You come back around here. There's an old rub. There's an old rub. There's an old rub back there that one there's a trail going in through there but this is where they they live you know there's an old rub there's an old one it just goes on and on i haven't seen any fresh ones right now here's an old one there's an old one there's an old one there there there's one over here. There's one there. And this is the type of place where you will see them during daylight because this is a bedding area. All through this, this is a huge area too. It's like a quarter mile long along this creek. It opens up right here. Here's an old one here. I haven't seen any fresh ones from the last couple of years they all look oh here's one there's a trail here's one that's fresher and look how tall this one is holy cow look at that that comes up to right below my chest that's a big buck and then uh there's another one And then you come out into this stuff. <sighs> Woods over there. There's a creek in the middle of this. Beaver ponds. I mean, you got to go in the, in the thick stuff. So I'm definitely going to come in here this fall and put some hunts in around here. There's a beaver pond. Active one, too. Yeah, there's the house. They'll be able to watch some ducks and stuff fly in, too, during the fall. But... Uh, maybe I can find a tree in here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get a ground blind, make some shooting lanes and tuck it in. So that's the plan. I just got to figure out the best spot. This actually looks pretty good. And it might even be a tree, but boy, it'd be pretty thick. You, you might be able to get in here with um, a saddle. Actually, yeah, I mean, you could get in this tree with a saddle. But uh, to get any type of shooting, you'd have to clear out quite a bit and I think that would ruin the spot so I think you're better off with a ground blind tucked in one of these spots and then cut a trail into it this is a honey, honey hole there's one there there that was probably one everything looks looks a couple years old except that one which was super high woodcock Good place to bird hunt, too. This is a good spot, for sure. Old rub there. Even though I'm not seeing fresh sign, I know. I mean, there's the one there. That one must have grown up, because I can't imagine. I don't know what the hell happened here. There are elk around here. Um, so, 
<clears throat> that could have been an elk from a couple years ago, but, um, or just the rub grew, grew up. I don't know what the hell that is, to be honest with you. But anyway, there are elk around here. But, uh, yeah, and then when you, I'll follow this out. I'll show you this massive trail between the uh, clear-cut area and this um, kind of bottom land swamp trees or whatever you want to call it. So we're coming back out where I showed that log right there. There's a bed. And uh, then you get into this, this trail. And that trail goes all the way along the trees and there is these popples, you know, butted up against the um, hardwoods. And then you have more popples and then you have that kind of swampy um, trees right before the actual marsh grass and stuff like that. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to find, I mean, all this looks good. I'm just trying to find the actual best high percentage spot. Tons of raspberries. So I'm just walking along, trying to cut the trails that go into the stuff in and out, you know, following them back and uh, trying to find the best spot, which that one back there looked pretty damn good with all those rubs. But there's trails all over. There's one right there that's been used. But this is, you're going to see deer during the daylight in spots like this. A lot of this is uh, actual hazelnuts. A lot of these bushes are hazelnuts, which the deer will eat that too. Just food everywhere. The reason I'm checking this spot out is because um, two years ago, the biggest buck I've ever seen in the woods came out of this stuff and into the hardwoods. And I was hunting on the edge and um, screwed up the shot, hit him in the elbow. He survived. And uh, the next day I tracked him. I don't know. It was a long way, five, 600 yards. It was, uh, there was snow on the ground and I kicked him out of his bed. I got within 30 yards of him in this stuff and he got up and just walked away. He knew something was there, but he didn't um, take off running because <clears throat> it was windy that day when I was tracking him. So um, he wasn't sure. I don't think it was you know, perceived it to be a real danger, but he did mosey on out. And I, even if I had a gun, I wouldn't have been able to shot him. But uh, I tried to hunt him last year by putting a tree right on the edge of the hardwoods uh, where the a trail came out. But um, I'd never even seen a deer, and I hunted that stand three times, and it looked like a really good spot. So this year, I'm going to try something different. I think I'm going to put a ground blind right in here in this stuff and cut a couple shooting lanes into this trail is what I want to do. This trail that goes in between. Um, something where I can see the deer and then the next shooting lane have a chance to shoot them. Um, so two shooting lanes like on a 45 off the ground blind is what I'm thinking. So no matter which way they're coming, you'll see them first. Let's see if you want to shoot them. And then the next lane he goes in um, would be try to take them. So... That is my plan, and then have like an access route in the back of the stand off the hardwoods where I can get in real quiet. But if anything else jumps out at me, I'm gonna maybe set up two spots. So, so I'm coming down this trail, going this way, and uh, I see it opens up here, which I didn't think was a, a big deal, but I'm kind of checking it out, and then I notice this little dip the woods I don't know if you can kind of dips in well sure enough there's a trail coming through there old rub there it's so thick in here that if there was a big buck he would kind of have to find a, a slightly open spot to get just to get his antlers through I mean, he wouldn't, 
he'd have a real hard time going through that. So we come up here and here's a rub. And that one is almost chest high. There's another one too. Some deer hair on here. Oh yeah. That one's chest height. That one's chest height. This looks really good actually. There's one. There's one. There's one. This is maybe what? Two years. There's one. Let's follow this. There's one. There. There. This looks pretty worn down. This is, there's one over here. I'm sure he hangs out here. Right before dark. And actually this is the spot I had marked before, before I came into here. This is a nice little clearing. So yeah, I'm definitely putting a stand right here. This is, Right along open woods. Um, but I'm willing to bet you'd have a, right before dark, a chance at shooting this buck. So this would be a good evening stand. And then if I get a blind and a, set up a blind in a the different location in there, like I was talking about earlier, that would be a good morning stand. Get in there before they come back in. But right here would be a good evening stand. And uh, there's quite a few trees here that I can get my saddle up in. I'm just wondering what the best one is. That doesn't look too bad. Not a ton of cover. I gotta, you know, pretend that the leaves are off the trees or close to. Although I think I could maybe shoot a deer here early on. It's a, a double tree, so it provide a little bit more cover. I don't see anything else other than this thing, but this is like right on top of it. If you get up high though, way up there. That one too. But anyway, there's a nice basswood. Could get up in that one too. I would I'd have to cut some lanes, but anyway, this is this is it right here, man. This is for sure a stand I'm gonna sit. Because I can come in right through those woods, nice and quiet, and get up in one of these trees. And I could preset it too with some sticks. So I all I got to do is <clears throat> hang my my uh, ring of steps or whatever, and good to go. Nobody's gonna find my steps here. So pretty cool. I'm gonna head back in and and uh, follow that trail further and see if I can come up with another this spot. This is where I was thinking of putting one of these blinds now to the right of me is that trail that's only 10 yards away. You can kind of see the grass and stuff. And uh, put a couple shooting lanes in here. And But this is where the deer <clears throat> are bedding right in here. There's another older rub. Actually get through here pretty good. Uh, the, the does and stuff can. Just got to find the right spot and then I'll cut in a little access trail so I can slip in here real quiet. That's where I just was. If I get one 10 yards in there, I don't know how far the woods are through there though. I'd like to get one where it's kind <clears> of <throat> close to the hardwood so I can access it from the hardwoods and, and I don't have to walk through a ton of this kind of putting more scent in the bedding area because obviously they're bedding right inside there. I, can, I would imagine that these deer would travel this and feel safe during the daylight. One of those is sitting in a nice, nice ground blind, have your lunch all day sit. That'd be a good way to spend a, a day. There's a real tall rub right there. There's another one just under my chest. It's like a broken record. Oh, there. There we go. Boom, boom. Chest height. A lot of broken branches 
I'm guessing some of that is caused by look at that raking and stuff. I'd imagine. Following this up, looks this is open. Naturally, a little thin spot. That could even be a bed, but I didn't see any deer hair in there. And then it looks like it follows that way, but I didn't see any rubs coming in. Then when I turned around to walk back, there's one, there's one, there's one. There's one, that's even, I don't know if that was last fall, but probably the fall before that. This is raked up, it's way high, chin height. That was raked a long time ago. But uh, looks like, anyway, what I, my point here is that maybe that, that's uh, the way he comes in here in the morning because it's coming from the hardwoods in. And I don't see anything going out. So I don't think I can go wrong. Obviously, on this trail, if you had a, uh, two lanes to this trail, you'd be doing good. If I find a cross trail and I have a lane to that, that would be a real good spot. And I found a couple of those. I'm just trying to find one that's like got three different trails. So I could really up my odds, I guess. But I'm almost... Through this whole thing, I haven't found that yet. But I found a couple spots, like I say, that had um, shots to two different trails. There's tons of berries. So I just turned around, I didn't see any rubs coming in, and they're rubbed on the other side of the tree. which is all fine and dandy. I'd like to find one of those um, when I'm walking out. All the rubs are on that side. Because then I can set up in those hardwoods. Because obviously that's a route that they take <clears throat> at night. Or, you know, in the evening. Well, I'm coming to the end of it where my tree stand is I think I see the tree and uh I gotta go back to my four wheeler so I think I'm gonna go in the hardwoods and walk the edge of this back and then kind of check that out and see if I could find maybe a scrape because if I could find a scrape whoop, that uh was just outside this thick stuff that would be really good I think they would come out of this thick stuff and damn it and uh check their that scrape the only bad thing about that i got deer flies eating me is that you would sit there outside looking in this stuff and you would hear those deer walking around scraping branches and wouldn't be able to see them <laughs> i think you'd be a have a better chance in a ground blind but uh this is where my tree stand is. Right there. Well, we'll see if we see anything there in those woods. So we're coming back through the hardwoods. Uh, there's where all that brush was. And of course, there's a nice deer trail along that edge. It's pretty much, <clears throat> there'll be a deer trail on every kind of edge in the woods. You know, where it's swamp and hardwoods or pines and hardwoods or anything like that. You might have a, you know, decent chance of 
catching a buck in the daylight. This being so close, there's a cross trail. This being so close to um, thick cover, but I would rather be, you know, right in there, I think. You'd see how open this is. The leaves off of here, I wouldn't want to count on, uh, you know, seeing one during the daylight in here. Even though it is right on the edge, I'd rather be in there. So there's one trail right along the edge of the thick stuff and the hardwoods. And then you got this trail, what, 50 yards. This is like a highway. Good spot to shoot a doe, but the bucks will come out there, you know, cross that trail and scent check it and stuff. Probably wouldn't walk down here until nighttime. You can just see that cut right through there. Because I've shot a lot of bucks, but they're not a lot of, you know, mature bucks. You know, three, four, five year old deer. I've shot a lot of the 15, 16, 14 inch spread, eight pointers and stuff. Decent racks, you know, not baskets. The next step up but n but none of the real monsters and i missed that monster right here so two years later maybe he's still around i know that he hasn't been shot so we'll see if i get him this year well that was good that's a, another really good spot. I'm trying to find... Uh, so that is uh, public land next to me where I live. And, and uh, I was about three miles back on a logging road. And that is off of... That land is off of a dirt road that I live on. Probably 10 miles from Blacktop. Right around 10 miles. So we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. The, the gate going into that land is locked during... Um, during deer season so um you can't drive a four-wheeler back there so i have a, a electric fat tire bike and that's how i access way back there but um most people don't have that so i i rarely see anybody bow hunting um people come in there during gun they actually uh, uh some people have the the uh, combo to the lock that they can get in there and hunt that but otherwise i'm almost by myself during bow season i've seen a few people so, and then next to me is a state forest. So, um, and I have, I would say probably, I don't know, like eight or 10 spots that I'm really excited about hunting now. Um, so, and it just keeps continuing. I get more and more. Um, so it's really nice to have this area where I have just thousands and thousands, like 20,000 acres. So I, I don't hunt a stand usually more than three times a year. Um, rarely do I hunt a stand three times. It's usually twice. Or once if I don't see anything. But um, yeah, I think that's going to be a, a really good spot. I'm just trying to get more consistent, trying to shoot a, a real good mature buck. I've, I've consistent, consistently shot decent bucks, I would say. Not the little f baskets or whatever, but, a, you know, a nice 8-pointer, 10, 15-inch, 16-inch spread or whatever. But I want to go for something with mass and, you know, 20-inch or whatever. You know, the... the the biggest deer in the woods, pretty much. I would like to try to get... I've only shot one in my life. So I want to get a real bruiser and uh, and make it consistent. So that's why I'm trying to get smarter about hunting. Um, you know, I do all the scent control and all that stuff. And I got all the gear and whatever. But just trying to get uh, smarter about my uh, stand locations and choices. Trying to see a big buck during daylight. And where they hang out during daylight hours. Um, and this isn't even super pressured. And, and you still have to get real, you know, get thick, tight in the cover um, before they'll show themselves during daylight. Because I haven't seen um, too many during daylight around here. So anyway, today was good. I mean, that's, that's their bedroom. I mean, I saw over 200 rubs. So the weird thing was that none of them were fresh. So I'm puzzled by that. Um, 
because you know they're there, but um, not sure why I didn't see any from any rubs from last year. There might probably one. One was from last year. Um, so, but I only covered a small area. I mean, along that trail, that's a huge, huge area. So, um, maybe next time I'll, I'll follow along the grass and that, uh, kind of swampy brush and stuff instead of the, uh, where I was along the swampy brush stuff and the, uh, popples. And then also the popples and the hardwoods is where I, I walked. So if I went right along the, the creek bottom, maybe there's more, uh, fresh sign there. So you try that next time I walk through here, but anyway.